it's pretty simple, actually. Nothing as hardcore as the Three Kings stuff, which I would actually never do myself. But I saw something on here that reminded me of this game I played when I was little. You only need a friend and maybe a pillow if you'd like. But the results can be a little surprising, and there are a few warning signs to heed when exploring the doors of your mind. So here we go. Dim the lights and light a few candles. The name of the game is to put you into a nice meditative state. You need to be relaxed and be able to have a free mind. This is the most important for this to work. So put on some comfy clothes and relax. The only useful door to your mind is an open one. Next, lay your head in your partner's lap. Uh, pillows are always nice. Make sure your head is facing up. Your friend will need to rub both your temples in slow, circular motions, like a massage. It needs to be relaxing. That is key. Make sure they keep a pretty steady tempo, much ado about trancing and meditation. Third, this is where your friend will have to guide you, so to speak. Let your mind slash imagination do all of the work. This entire time, your eyes will be closed and you will be relaying descriptive information to your partner about your surroundings and such. A suggestion, maybe have a third person recording? Never second guess what comes to mind. Simply answer your partner's questions without hesitation. As they come to you, just let it happen. Here's what your helper should start you with. You are at one end of a very long corridor. There are numerous doors on both sides of this corridor, spanning the entire length. I want you to explore these doors and the rooms behind them. Describe to me what you can see, hear, touch, and feel with great detail. And from there, the exploration is up to your mind. Tips, warnings. Uh, Always pay attention to the door first. This will give you a clue as to what waits for you inside. Uh, note the door handles. Any imperfections, unusual color, shape, size. Also, the temperature of the door handle may or may not be important. If you go into a room full of clocks, leave immediately, or try to. I don't know what the reasoning behind this was. It was years ago, I apologize. All I know is that it was a big deal. I mean, you could stay if you wish, but don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, you probably shouldn't touch any of the clocks either. Uh, just don't say I didn't warn you. Anybody have any idea why a room full of clocks would be bad? Uh, this isn't going to be helpful, but I remember something bad about seeing old ladies too. Uh, anybody have any idea about that as well? Again, this is stuff I remember from when I was a kid. Um, not all things in your mind are benevolent towards you. I'm pretty sure you know that, hanging around here. But I thought I'd remind you, it, it's good to ask yourself questions. Sometimes these manifested characters can be quite revealing. But other times, they can just bring you down. Follow your gut instinct about certain doors. Uh, sometimes curiosity really does kill the cat. Oh, uh, check what's on your person. Describe what you're wearing. Check your pockets. Uh, you might have keys, trinkets, anything. Uh, you never know. They might be useful in your exploration, or at the very least, symbolic. Oh, and be forewarned, uh, I have experienced the inability to remove myself from this dreamlike state. Uh, true story, during one of my sessions, a character locked me in the room and my sister had to shake me violently awake. Happy exploring!